I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the Infectious Diseases Society of America's 2021 guidelines on the management of C. difficile infections in adults. There are some critically important new changes here. Very simply and clearly, fidaxomycin is now recommended as the preferred agent over vancomycin. Remember back in 2017, the IDSA recommended vancomycin over flagyl. Now, in 2021, the guidelines say that initial treatment of C. diff infection, the guideline committee suggests using fidaxomycin rather than vancomycin. Note that this is a conditional recommendation. What does a conditional recommendation mean? Well, it means that the IDSA used the rigorous grade approach to evidence evaluation, and in that rubric, the term we suggest indicates a conditional recommendation. What that means, and they explicitly state this, is that vancomycin remains an acceptable alternative. The committee recognized that the cost of fidaxomycin is much greater than vanco, so implementation of the recommendation to use fidaxomycin will depend upon local available resources. The rationale for this recommendation is that while initial clinical responses are similar for both fidaxomycin and vancomycin, fidaxomycin increased the rate of sustained response four weeks after the end of therapy as compared to vanco by 16%. The higher sustained clinical response associated with fidaxomycin may be especially beneficial to patients who are at the greatest risk of recurrences, meaning individuals who are over 65, those with compromised immunity, and those with a history of C. diff recurrence. Treatment of fulminant C. diff remains recommended therapy, high-dose vancomycin. For patients who have recurrent C. diff, the committee suggests using fidaxomycin in either a standard or a pulse dose regimen rather than standard dose courses of vancomycin. This also is a conditional recommendation. A pooled subgroup analysis of patients with multiple recurrences showed that fidaxomycin, when compared to vancomycin, increased the sustained response rate 30 days after treatment by 27%. The guidelines go on to say that vancomycin in a tapered and pulse dose regimen or vancomycin as a standard course are acceptable alternatives to the main recommendation. For patients with multiple recurrences, we can use either fidaxomycin, vancomycin in a taper or in a pulse dose regimen, vancomycin followed by rif rif rifaximin or fecal microbiota transplantation. Finally, another interesting new addition to the guidelines is the use of a monoclonal antibody against C. diff toxin, and that monoclonal antibody is called bezlotoximab. Bezlotoximab is given as a one-time infusion over 60 minutes, and it has a half-life of about 18 days. For patients with recurrent C. diff within the last six months, the committee suggested using bezlotoximab along with the recommended antibiotics rather than just the antibiotics alone. This was a conditional recommendation as well with a very low certainty of evidence. They go on to state that it might also be considered in patients with a primary C. diff episode who have risk factors for C. diff recurrence. The rationale for the recommendation is that the addition of bezlotoximab reduced CDI recurrence, C. diff recurrence, by almost 40%, and it reduced C. diff associated hospital readmission rates at 30 days by over 50%. The effect was greatest in those with the highest number of risk factors for recurrence. Remember, caution must be used with bezlotoximab in patients with CHF. So, in summary, consider fidaxomycin as the first-line therapy for C. diff with the greatest benefit in those with recurrent infection and those who are at highest risk of recurrences. A monoclonal antibody, bezlotoximab, is now available for those with recurrent C. diff and can be used along with either fidaxomycin or vancomycin 
to reduce the likelihood of C. diff recurrence. These are big, important changes. I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.